I said, he's a sore loser. Hallelujah. The Bible says Satan has come down with great wrath, but God's come down with great mercy. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many here to give some high praise to God? So how many here to put hallelujah? Amen. Put some praise into this church service. Hallelujah. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth. Two-edged sword in their hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The church has power through worship, through the name. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not given part of the armor, but the whole armor of God has been given to God's people. Hallelujah. And how many are thankful that we have a garment of praise? I don't have the spirit of heaviness on me here tonight. I said, I don't have the spirit of heaviness on me here tonight. Hallelujah. God has been good to me. I said, God has been good to me. I think we ought to put some praise into this place. That everybody in this place, what would happen if everybody would start talking in tongues? Everybody would lift their, come on. I believe God could fill everybody in this house. God could heal bodies in this house. God could bring deliverance. Hallelujah in this house. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And I love him tonight. How many love the Lord? Tonight. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. I'm on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen, amen. I'm not singing no specials. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad I've got somebody who's got my back here, but I'm, I'm not singing any specials. Hallelujah. Saving my voice for the word of the Lord. I love God. I want to go to heaven. How many want to go to heaven? How many of that is... Hallelujah. Why we are here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to make our calling and election sure. Hallelujah. Church is called the elect of God. Amen. It's one of the titles. We're called the wise virgins. We're called the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church. We're called the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm thankful to be a part, amen, of the body of Jesus Christ. I said, how many are thankful to be a part of the body? And let me tell you what, this ain't the whole body. Amen. God has got a number no man could number. Hallelujah. I said, no man could number. Hallelujah. Amen. And if the Bible says it, the longer I live for God, amen, and, and we say this, how many, how many just believe God can't lie? But there's something about the longer you live for God, the more, amen, when he says something, you know it's true, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. And God is for his people. How many are thankful that God is for his people? Amen, amen. And uh, he has done so much for us, and hallelujah. He never quits giving. He never, he never quits giving, hallelujah. And uh, tonight I want to give some things that uh, um, we need to hear, hallelujah. And we need to understand. I'm going to ask everybody, how many, how many believe you can stay in the sanctuary here tonight and be a zero distraction to somebody, there's people here that really need the Lord. Amen. And how many want to, uh, amen. And many of you have made this the house of prayer. That's what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, amen. want to turn your attention tonight, amen, to the, we're going to read just from two settings of Scripture. And from the time you're seated, I'm going to try to limit this. 
Amen. To about 35, 40 minutes. And uh, if you help me preach, I think I can do that. Amen. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter number 8. Amen. Rahab was looking down, but there was another man by the name of Achan, and he was looking, what can I get from the heathen? And Rahab was saying, what can I get from God's anointed people? Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? So don't be looking outside of, amen, this right here. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter number 8, and we will... Read verse number 31 through 36. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If, I say if, you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That is a statement we need to understand. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Hallelujah. And it said, the servant, hallelujah, amen, really only has one of two masters, and it doesn't stay in that house forever. The servant, hallelujah, amen, and your spirit is a servant, hallelujah, to either God or this world, the God of this world. And this is why Jesus said in Matthew that no man can serve two masters, either he will Hate the one and hold to the other. Amen. And he said, you can't serve God and mammon. Hallelujah. And he referred to mammon because it's talking about the values of the world. Amen. And the things that they deem as valuable. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So, Amen. Hallelujah. Their answer to the, to the Lord was, we were never in bondage to any man. I want you to note that. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus stated, amen, if you continue to sin, amen, you are serving a master, a master of sin. There are people that are masters at what they do. They're not novices at what they do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, hallelujah, reading this, amen, there is a powerful force involved, amen, for people to lay hold of, and that is the truth, and then to continue in that truth. When he's talking about truth, he's speaking of his word. His word will make you free. Amen. Now, I want to take you to something that uh, familiar with, uh, but it's, it's a lot deeper than even what I have preached. Hallelujah. We're going to look at the book of Romans chapter number 6. And we're going to look at what God has really done for us so that we can serve Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's more than just coming to church. Amen. We've got to understand so that we may appreciate. Amen. We've got to understand so that we can worship. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, serve the Lord with all of our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I can speed read. I, I really can. Hallelujah. 
Amen. But I'm going to say these things in understanding. It won't take me long to go through these scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, Romans chapter number 6, amen, speaks about the importance of baptism. Amen. And it states, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead, everybody say dead, to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized. He was speaking to a Jesus baptized people. Amen. We're baptized into his death. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together with God in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin or be the servant to sin. I want you to note that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very plain by the help of God with this teaching. He that is dead is freed from sin. Say that with me. If you're dead, you're free to serve a new master. If you're dead, you're free to serve a new master. Amen. And that old master can't follow you into the grave. And he doesn't like the one that would meet him there. I'm making war against the devil here tonight. Come on, somebody needs to lay hold of this here tonight. How many are here to help the preacher preach? He that is dead is free from sin. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Many truths are being, amen, uh, inoculated into the believer's mind through this. Death hath no more dominion. That former master does not rule over you any longer. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in he, God, that, amen, that liveth, he liveth unto God. When you die out to sin, amen, and you get baptized in Jesus' name, you're given the power to serve a new master. We, come on, apostolic church needs to understand this doctrine, and we need to shout about it. Likewise, reckon you yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord or the Holy Ghost. Let not therefore, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let the former master come back and say, That body belongs to me. Say, No. You're not my master anymore. You're not telling me what I can do and what I cannot do anymore. Amen. The Bible says, it says, don't let sin reign. Hallelujah. Or, amen, put its crown on that former master, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, because we're no longer under that master. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness Unto God. Hallelujah. For sin shall not have dominion over you. The devil's a liar. You don't have to let him rule over you. Have dominion over your thoughts. Over your hands. Your feet. Your anything. Your possessions. You belong to God now. Saint of God. We ought to get excited about this. If you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you need to change your master tonight. Woo. He'll chase you till you're dead and you're buried. And you're not just dead and buried, but the one you got buried with came on the inside of you. I 
I'm glad he didn't stop at baptism. I'm glad our teaching just doesn't stop at the water. Hallelujah. He'll come out of that tomb with you. And say, hey, this is a new creature. This is a new man on the block now. Don't do the things we used to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's jump down to verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey. Whether notice this of sin unto death. When you yield your life to sin. Amen. You're yielding. Amen. To the prince of death. But Jesus took the keys from that prince. And he has the keys of death and hell and the grave. Amen. This is God's church, God's world. Hallelujah. Amen. And it says, whether of sin and the death or of obedience unto righteousness, there's power when you obey the righteousness of God's word. In verse 17, it inserts this. I like Paul because many times in the middle of his teaching, he'll say, but God. Who's rich in mercy? But God. Be thanked. He said, let's just thank God a little bit right now. But God be thanked. That you were a servant. You were a slave to sin. But the truth made you free. You shall know the truth. You ain't going to talk me out of it. You ain't going to talk me out of... This is the power of obedience. You've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered to you. It was good. This is mine. This is my gospel. This is my Jesus. This is my hope. Amen. Hallelujah. God be thanked that you were under a former master. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. Truth, amen, makes us free. The gospel makes us free. Amen. This is why we're not ashamed of the gospel. Hallelujah. Notice this. Hallelujah. Being then made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Not just random. You become a servant to the righteous God in you. And he said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of the weakness of your flesh. For as you have yielded past tense, your members servants, if I say servants, to uncleanness and to lawlessness and to more unlawlessness. Lawlessness. Now we yield our members servants to righteousness and to holiness. God separates us from sin because we're not going to serve sin or the master of that sin any longer. The blood still separates. The blood still lifts up. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says this. Amen. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free. Amen. Hallelujah. You were absolutely free from righteousness. Because you were serving, hallelujah, an unrighteous master. I want you to see this the way I think you got the same Holy Ghost. That's the author of this book. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When, amen, you serve sin, hallelujah, amen, you were free from righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And what fruit had you? In those things whereof you are now ashamed. Amen. How many believe the devil will make you ashamed of how you lived and what you did? He'll make you do it, then he'll he'll laugh at you. He'll mock at you. He'll make you look like a fool, act like a fool. But God won't. I said, we serve a good master tonight. 
Stay with me here. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end eternal, everlasting life. Finally, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, amen, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He sums up, hallelujah, amen, what God does in two masters. And then he says, amen, your master pays you in verse 23. He gives you the paycheck of death for sinning that you don't want. But the gift of God for living for God. The what's, what's in it for me? Eternal life. Being free from condemnation. Being free from that giant question mark. Am I saved or not? Yes, I'm saved. I don't serve that master anymore. Amen. And I know I've preached a lot of this here. I'm going to try to condense this down. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I just want to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's serve the good master. Turn to your neighbor and say, I make up my mind tonight. No question mark about what, what the end result of this is. You live for God, you're going to get everlasting life. You give your life and your members and He's not going to rip you off in the end. Amen. Hallelujah. And could you pray with me? And let's ask the Lord in just the next few minutes, amen, to speak to us. Hallelujah, this Sunday evening. Would you please pray with me this evening? Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. Thank you for the power of your gospel, the power of your word. We understand through faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That man was created, hallelujah, from the dust that you created. Hallelujah. That the earth is the Lord's. Hallelujah. That all souls are yours. Hallelujah. We're asking, Lord Jesus Christ, let us be fully persuaded. Hallelujah. That nothing shall separate us from the love of God. From the love of this master that now rules and reigns in our life on earth. Give you the praise. I need your touch and anointing one more time. And the church, hallelujah, said in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. And let's clap our hands as we lift our voice. Come on, let's make some noise. A joyful noise. Hallelujah. Anybody free in the house tonight? I said, is anybody still free? Does anybody still understand what made you free? Who made you free? God richly bless you tonight. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Going to the text in John chapter number 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus stated something that we rejoice in. Amen. We understand that we not only, amen, hear the word of God, but we continue in that word. Amen. We've got to continue in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. And in so doing, hallelujah, it makes us, hallelujah, free from our former master. I want to keep emphasizing that. Don't be tired of hearing that. Hallelujah. There's only two masters. There's only two roads. There's only two foundations to build on. There's only two destinies that you can go to. Come on. I'm glad I'm on my way to heaven. I'm glad I'm preaching to people that are free and whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Like Patrick. Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Amen. Hallelujah. He was talking of physical death, of course. 
And he said, hallelujah, you shall know, be fully acquainted with the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Those that were there, hallelujah, they answered the Lord. Something really remarkable. They said, we be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free. Amen. I believe that they knew that their ancestors were slaves in the land of Egypt. And when they quit serving God, God, hallelujah, delivered them up to the Babylonians. And they become servants to the Babylonians or false religion. God's answer, if you don't want to serve me, I'll let you serve the enemy. The enemy is still false religion. Because religion doesn't set you free. The truth makes you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They went into, amen, hallelujah, Chaldean bondage. Another king arose from the Medes and the Persians, or, amen, the common, hallelujah, phrase, and we know it today, Persians are the Iranians, hallelujah, which are still an enemy of the Jewish people, hallelujah, and people in general. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody, hallelujah, that does not serve God serves a different master, the devil. Hallelujah. Any doctrine that is not a doctrine of God can be and will be a doctrine of devils. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the doctrine of devils, hallelujah, doesn't set you free. But God put me in a one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, Jesus name baptized church. And I'm free tonight. I'm still free tonight. Amen. And they made the calculation that they were never in bondage to any man. And the list goes on. If you will see after they rejected Jesus, the good master of the house, they went in bondage and were in servitude, amen, to many other nations and peoples until, hallelujah, World War II, and they became the servants to the Nazi regime. Hallelujah. And the enemy's final solution was you're going to be our servants till we kill you. That is still Satan's agenda today. He can't give you life, but Jesus can. His final solution is serve him, and in the end, the wage of sin is death. I'm glad we've got a greater message of life. It's good. This is a good life to live. Amen. And I don't find any fault with my master. Hallelujah. And the truth made me free. Hallelujah. And kept me. Hallelujah. Amen. For many things. Hallelujah. That Satan, amen, probably had plans for all of us. Hallelujah. Because sin brings misery. Sin brings condemnation. Hallelujah. And so the Lord, amen, hallelujah, could have given the list that I gave you very aptly and very accurately. But God cut the chase and he said the worst slave is somebody that's a slave to sin and the devil. I'm preaching to people that used to be a slave to alcohol. That used to be a servant to marijuana and beyond. That used to be a servant and he is a driving. Amen. Hallelujah. He doesn't give you money. He takes it away from you. He doesn't give you health. He takes your health. God will give your health back. He'll give your mind back. He'll, come on. He'll give your joy back. God hates that former master more. He declared war on that devil at Calvary. And I've got news. He defeated him. Had the princes of this world known. I said, had they known. What he, but the devil not only blinds the mind, but he's blinded himself. If I can just kill this man. If I can just shut him up. Come on, somebody. 
but he arose from the grave. I said he arose from the grave. The devil don't like this. He likes dead church. He likes a dead response. But we serve the living God. He said, I'm the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. I'm not the God of the dead. I'm not the God of the dead church. Hey, hey, God set us free so we can shout the way we're shouting tonight. So I can preach the way it needs to be preached tonight. Woo. So I, Satan hates people being in the apostolic church. He hates what you're shouting about. He hates the one that's on the inside. And so he said, he that committeth sin is the servant of sin. Little did we know that our former master was going to little by little get us deeper and deeper into the involvement of his mastery over us. Come on, somebody. This is not a negative message. God, in his wisdom, begins to unfold. And I'm going to jump right into this. Because this might take just a few minutes. Hallelujah. Amen. But baptism is more than just a washing away of our sin. That's all you need to know. If you want that former master to stop following you and beating you up. This is a spiritual warfare. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against spirits of hell. But we've got the victory. My God ain't afraid of the devil. He ain't afraid of any addiction. He's not afraid of countering every false doctrine. The truth will make you free. And as long as we were committing sin, hallelujah, amen. And he was saying, you're mine, and you're going to be mine forever. He's a liar. Amen. He is a liar. You're never getting off alcohol. You're never getting off a cigarette. What you've been, you're always going to be. He's a liar. I'm living apostolic proof. He's a liar. I said he's a liar. Lie kept us bound. But apostolic truth made us free. I'm not committing sin every I've got a new master. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he reminds the church. Amen. Hallelujah. That we can't continue in sin. We've got to understand. Amen. That we don't share masters. We don't continue. In sin, because he that committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the doctrine of Jesus and our doctrine tonight is no man can serve two masters. No man. Satan wants the house. He gets the house, he gets the windows. And if he gets the house, he gets the door. 
on somebody. And he puts what he wants in that house. But one is stronger than he comes along and says, I, amen, I'm going to be the new owner of this house. This is Bible. Come on, somebody. That's why you got to fight every time he starts knocking at the door. This house belongs to God. And can I tell you, this house we're in tonight belongs to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, amen, trying to stay course with this. Amen. He points, of course, to a critical, amen, doctrine of baptism that washes away our sin, that brings us into covenant blood relationship with God. Covenant of circumcision. Blood covenant. He gives us his blood in water baptism, in the power of the name of Jesus. I'm glad somebody preached to me the truth about Jesus' name baptism. Jesus went to the cross for me. Jesus went to the tomb for me. Jesus filled the believers with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost and he's still filling believers and setting people free. And so, in this teaching, this doctrine, hallelujah, amen, he begins to introduce, hallelujah, something that they were very familiar with and that was that they were buried with him. I'm glad God picked my great plot out. Come on, somebody. I believe God knew when every one of us was going to get baptized in Jesus' name. The Bible says, hallelujah, that when we were baptized, we began to walk in newness of life as a new creature. Because God was not the master on the outside. Amen. He not only washed the house, but now he's in the house. He's Christ in you. The hope of glory. Satan takes people captive at his own will. And Satan possesses certain people. Satan oppresses certain people. But God's greatest and grand desire is fulfilled, hallelujah, when it's not just you feeling God, but God is on the inside of you. And your hands don't do and reach for what they used to reach for. You don't dance to the same thing. There's a new man walking and dancing in my shoes. And all of that just, it was, it's exciting. And the more you read, the deeper the explanation of why you must be baptized. He goes on to say, hallelujah, that henceforth we should not serve sin. He that is dead is free from sin. No matter how bad of a sinner you were, how bad... Amen. Of a debt of sin that you have. You're dead. And the creditor can't come after you when you're dead. And he really can't come after you when you're buried. And this burial, when you get buried, you walk. Amen. You come up a new creature. There was a, this ain't the same man that used to walk the streets of an old somebody. He hates Jesus' name baptism. We're going to preach Jesus' name baptism. We're going to tell everybody, amen, the blood is where the power's at. Buried with him in baptism. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me here? John, 
Hallelujah. We're in Romans right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse number 9, it states, being raised from the dead. Once you get raised from the dead, are you ready for this? You die no more. That's why Christ came. The devil wanted you, amen, to go to a Christless grave. He wanted you to die without the Holy Ghost, to die in your sins. Help me here tonight. Because he wanted dominion over you. He wanted sin on the inside of you. He wanted sin. He wanted to control your tongue. Your purpose of life. Come on, somebody. And it states those that are buried in Jesus' name, baptism, death no longer has dominion. He dies no more. I'm, I'm going to tell somebody here tonight. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell everybody. Amen. Death should not be something you're afraid of. It was conquered by Jesus. And when you are baptized in Jesus Christ's name, it says personally to you, you're not going to die again. Say, what if somebody shoots me? I'm on my way to heaven. That don't sound like death to me. Somebody threatens to kill you, say, man, don't threaten me with heaven. Now, if you ain't ready, oh, don't. That's why they weren't afraid to die. He wasn't afraid to preach it. Come on. To die is what? Everybody say to live is living for life. How many? Let's be honest. Hold, hold up your hand. This is the greatest life. Don't hang around people with this is a drug. This is a good life. It's a faith walk. It's a dominion walk. Woo! Let me quickly go through this here. Hallelujah. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. His death and his resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. That we should not serve sin. We're freed from sin. Hallelujah. Death no longer has dominion over us. Verse 11. Amen. We reckon. And this is an accounting term. Hallelujah. Amen. We were dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. We were dead to sin. We were born in sin. There's an Old Testament story. Hallelujah. Amen. Where Jacob... Hallelujah, wanted to be the first one out. But Esau, the man of the earth, was the first one out. But God said, Jacob have I loved. And the elder, the first birth, the first man, the physical man, shall serve the God of the second birth. It was a prophecy. The elder. This body doesn't serve sin anymore. There's a and this is why you must be born again. You must get baptized. You must get buried before the world buries you. Now, how many are with me here? We're going to close here in just a, just a few days. Amen. Hallelujah. Now it says, Hallelujah. In verse number 12, it says, don't let sin, amen, reign in your mortal body. You don't have to obey the devil with one more thought, one more word, one more day. When the devil tells you you shouldn't be worshiping God, don't obey that, master. Something down on the inside of me tells me, go ahead. So, amen. And let me just stay up here. I'm going to have to stay up here. 
We're going to be here till Wednesday. The Bible says, hallelujah, amen, that we should obey that former master, verse 12. Verse 13, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness under sin. Hallelujah. But yield yourself, surrender yourself to God as those that are alive from the dead. Matter of fact, let me just hit this again. Hallelujah. Someone threatens to kill you. Hallelujah. You can't kill me. I'm already dead. <laughs> but I'm alive. When Jesus rose from the grave, they couldn't crucify him again. They had no power to kill him again. And now he's on the inside of you. He's, come on, God wants everybody under the sound of my voice to get this. Hallelujah. Amen. And how many want to be an instrument in the hands of God? Anybody want to be an instrument? Whew. Hallelujah. Amen. With a new song. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Everybody say members. Hallelujah. Of righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Now in this, he goes on, hallelujah, and he states in verse 14, hallelujah, sin shall not rule or have dominion over you. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse 16, know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey. It goes back to servitude. Satan wants a slave. And I want to tell you something, everything that I've read about slaves in the past, there's no happy slaves. But the servants of God were the only ones that are happy in this world. The only slaves are the slaves that are the love slaves of God. Sheba said, happy are these thy servants. She come from a land where the servants weren't happy. So she came from a land of bondage. One thing she noticed, she said, these people are happy. They don't have chains holding them in the house. And I'll tell you, we don't make anybody do anything. You don't want to pray, we ain't going to make you pray. You don't want to shout. You don't have to. I want to. I get to. I'm free to do it. The devil can't stop you from saying amen, from praying, from dancing. He no longer has dominion over you. This is an important part of baptism that we need to understand. It's not just the washing of sin. Hallelujah. But it is you dying so that that master does not rule over you. Because slaves often in most times in history, were slaves from the womb to the tomb. And it's still going on in the world today. There's nobody freer than a one God apostolic saint of God. Somebody tells you this is bondage, they're a liar. This is not bondage. They lack understanding. They need to read Romans 6 again. Sin doesn't rule over me anymore. Hallelujah. There's power in obeying the Holy Ghost. Amen. The law of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we believe and get baptized. Hallelujah. Just a little bit of understanding comes into our mind. And we feel the cleansing and the washing. But we don't realize, hallelujah, amen, that we were, hallelujah, once alive to sin. But now through that burial, he also, hallelujah, caused Satan to lose his grip on us. Through the victory of Christ's grave. I'm telling you, I cannot... Amen. It would take me hours to go through the power of Jesus' name baptism. 
because the Bible, amen, shows us scripture after scripture the benefit of the power of what Christ does for us. Amen. That's why it's called the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, hallelujah, go bring this to a close. Amen. I think I've got just a few minutes left. Hallelujah. Amen. And we were servants. We obeyed a former master. We were a step away from death and didn't know it. Come on, somebody. We weren't fit to live and we weren't ready to die. I said we weren't fit to live and we weren't ready to die. That's why people out in the world, they're survivors. There's something innate within them. I'm not right with God. Not everybody feels that way. But those that do, God brings them to the house of God and shows them how to get the righteousness of God through repentance and baptism in Jesus' name. When you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. There's people that want to do right but don't know how. Haven't been taught the righteousness and the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so it's transferred to us. And the Bible says, but God be thanked. Every time we come to the house of God, God be thanked. I'm not living in sin anymore. I'm not drinking a case of beer every weekend. Come on, I'm not smoking pot with the boys on the block anymore. I'm not going to the crack house. I'm going to God's house. I said, I'm going to God's house. I was glad when they said to me, God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. And we came in bewildered. We came in confused. We came in heavy laden. We watched people that were free. And we were so locked up. Your head was down. Your hands were on the pew. Gripping it because you didn't want to leave. You had white knuckle fever. You felt God. And God wanted you there. Then all of a sudden, he said, amen, through a preacher, if you repent, I'll forgive you. If you arise and be baptized, he'll wash away your sins. Preacher told you, you can get the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, if you don't get excited about this, the devil will give you something to get excited about. He'll take your dance. How many ain't going to let the devil take your dance? This joy I have, Jesus gave it to me. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We heard the doctrine. It does matter. The doctrine. Hallelujah. It does matter your fellowship. Being made free from sin. All of a sudden. You want to start doing right. Instead of selling drugs. You were selling the gospel. You're wanting to come on. I had a guy knock on my door right after I got the Holy Ghost. And he said, hey, man, you got any weed? I go, no, but let me tell you what I do have. Such as I do have, I'm going to give to you. And I started telling about this one God church. And I said, it's exciting. Them people are excited about living for God. I'm not going to take you to a mortuary. I'm not going to take you where people that are. They got smiles on their face. They'll pray with you. They care for you. Because he couldn't believe that God could do. 
that I'm fresh out of that stuff, but such as I do have, I'm going to give to you. And I'm glad I've seen soul after soul receive this. Amen. Repent. Get baptized and get the Holy Ghost. There are hungry people out there. There are people that are looking for what we have. Amen. That's why we're here. Hallelujah. And I'm closing. Just remain standing. Hallelujah. We become servants of righteousness. Amen. We have a new message. People don't recognize us. He don't take the tattoos off your body. But he washes, hallelujah, the iniquity and the depth of the sin of the soul. If you got, amen, hallelujah, if you're blind in one eye, maybe he'll heal it and maybe he won't. But all of your sins are going to be washed away. And over there, you're going to have a brand new body. With... Come on, somebody. And in this teaching, hallelujah, we were the servants of sin. We, we were ashamed of what we did. I can honestly tell you I am ashamed of teaching people how to sin. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know the destiny I was leading their soul down. If they died, they died. They died. Come on, somebody. Amen. We were blind. Hallelujah. We had to be born again to see, for the scales to fall off of our eyes, to realize, amen, amen, that our sin was affecting other people as well as ourselves. If you sin, you're going to try to get somebody to follow you. And if you live righteous, you're going to try to get someone to follow you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I can shout to God alone. I can dance when nobody's around. But I love to dance with the church body. I love to come to church and see people that are still set free. They said no through the power of the indwelling Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The power of the blood still causes, hallelujah, God to own us. And we are bought with a price. Going down, hallelujah, we were ashamed. How many, how many can remember in some of the thoughts, the back flash that just make you ashamed, make you cringe? Anybody? Hallelujah. It always makes me, always makes me ashamed. I had no fruit. I had no, I had no future. I had no hope in what I was doing. Amen. I was just existing in a world that was trying to make me like them. Hallelujah. Amen. And the longer you walk in darkness, the more you get used to the darkness. I said, the more you can get around in the dark and it doesn't bother you anymore. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We were ashamed. Hallelujah. But we stepped into the presence of God and God is light. And that light is a blinding light. It's like that light literally knocked Paul off of that beast onto the ground and blinded him. Because he thought he saw. And some people he has got to make blind so they can see. And can I tell you when Paul got his sight back? Hallelujah, is when they laid his hands on, Ananias laid his hands on them and he was baptized in Jesus Christ's name. God gave the sight back. He sets the captive free. He opens the eyes of the blind. Come on, somebody. That's why the Holy Ghost is here tonight. With every hand raised to God right now. Satan doesn't want to tell you that he'll give you pleasure of flesh. He'll give you highs. And, but at the end, the wage 
His final solution, the paycheck, is death. After he sums up the masters, hallelujah, then he said there's two pay lines. Hallelujah, there's two masters that are going to meet out because whoever you work for, that's who's going to pay you. And we thought that we were just benefiting ourselves in the world, but we were working for a master. I said we were working. That's how subtle he is. We did not even know. Hallelujah. We thought, hallelujah, we were that free moral agent doing our own thing, paddling our own canoe. But we didn't realize that we were just a puppet. And when nighttime came, something rose up on the inside of us. And we got dressed. And we started doing that Father's business. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We stepped into, a, we stepped into light. His word is a lamp unto my feet. Amen. That light shined in our heart. That glorious gospel shined in our heart. He forgave us of our sin. Hallelujah. He filled us with the Holy Ghost. He washed away our sin. Hallelujah. He took back the house that Satan had used for 20 or 30 or 40 Sometimes up to seven decades. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to change masters here tonight? If you're in the house and you don't want the paycheck of death, why don't you make your way to this altar? There's time to change masters here. Hallelujah. You're in the house of a good master. You're in the house of a forgiving God. Hallelujah. God who is rich in mercy. A God that will be thanked for delivering us through a doctrine, through a one sentence that changed our eternity. Hallelujah. Acts 2.38 is changing eternities throughout this globe tonight. Come on. Let's make our way to an altar. Let's lift our voice to God. I don't serve the master of sin when it is finished bring it forth death the gift of God is eternal life he died for you come be buried with him If you're...